Welcome everybody to tonight's Culture Salon uh, presented by the Embassy of Ireland in Berlin. Uh, we're absolutely honoured tonight to uh, invite two guest speakers, Alana Egan and Melissa Canvas, who will be presenting the exhibition Small Field, which is currently showing in the Kunsthaus Bremen, uh, proudly presented by the Embassy of Ireland in Germany. Um, so Alana, is an artist born in 1979 in Dublin. She studied at Glasgow School of Art and her work is held in collections, uh, including in IMA and in the Arts Council collection. Uh, recent shows she has had at Conrad Fischer Gallery in Dusseldorf, Farb Vision in Berlin, Carolyn Gallery, Campbell Line, Dumfrieshire, Scotland, Temple Bar Gallery and Studios, and Mary Mary Glasgow, amongst many other shows that she's had recently. And Melissa Canvas also joins us from Berlin. Uh, she is a writer and curator based here in Berlin, uh, but she is also the interim curator in the Kunsthaus Bremen. She is co-founder of the Project Space um, <clears throat> Stations in Berlin and Kreuzberg, and she previously worked in the Haus der Kulturen der Welt. Um, she has also initiated exhibitions in Glasgow, Buenos Aires and Berlin. So I'm going to hand over now to Melissa, who is going to introduce the exhibition. Um, thank you, uh, Candice, for having us, first of all, and I'm glad uh, we have the opportunity to introduce and um, discuss Alana's exhibition, especially these days for access to exhibitions are um, yeah, limited for quite a while now. So um, thank you and um, the embassy for giving us uh, this opportunity. Um, I would like to begin with saying a few words about the Künstlerhaus Bremen in general for those who are not familiar with the institution. Um, Künstlerhaus Bremen was founded in 1992 and the whole complex uh, consists of 20 artist studios, um, guest studios, um, and an exhibition space where uh, the small field is on view at the moment. Um, it also hosts two artist associations, um, various small businesses, as well as a restaurant. So generally, it is a place where our, that aims at providing alternative um, environments and structures for artistic production and um, I guess it's probably comparable um, to the Temple Bar Gallery and Studios um, in Dublin. So um, Small Field, uh, that's the title of the exhibition, um, brings together older and new work by Alana Egan, uh, whose work I have initially seen in an exhibition in Glasgow about almost 10 years ago, I think. Um, so ever since I was very intrigued by her work and very interested in it, but I never really thought, um, yeah, that we get the chance to collaborate uh, on a project together. So um, therefore I'm very happy it all worked out and it really is a beautiful exhibition, uh, even though it all happened under quite, uh, yeah, um, new circumstances, I would say. Uh, so thank you, Alana, for your patience and um, and for preparing the show from, from the distance. Um, yeah, it was a very, very inspiring process in the end. So um, thank you very much. Um, I would also quickly like to thank the whole uh, team at Künstlerhaus, especially Anna and Julika, um, as well as my friend and colleague Michaela, who really supported us during, during the install last week. So thank you all very much. Um, I'm now going to share uh, some uh, installation views while speaking about the exhibition. So, um, Um, so I will start with showing some installation views and say a few introductory words about uh, the show and also about the supporting program uh, before Alana will go into detail and speak about some of the works uh, in the exhibition in detail. And um, 
yeah and after that we can open it up for discussion or um for questions i think um so small field um is more like a setting i would say so there is not really an overall topic as such um it's rather open and uh more focused um on the process than on a final outcome So for this exhibition, we have chosen a selection of existing and uh, new works, such as the installation Slow Music, um, which is the uh, installation on the left-hand side here on this picture. And here it is. Um, and uh, I was very interested in seeing how the appearance of the work uh, or the work itself changes when having a different constellation and how things shift in the reception um, of the work. Especially when grouping them um, differently. Um, so the whole situation in the space is very atmospheric. Um, it's very calm and literally uh, stays on the ground. Um, as you can see, the sculptures are kept rather low or closer to the floor and eventually uh, they, they literally make you go down on your knees to really see or experience the work. So there are, there are several references such as architectural elements, support structures that appear here and there and also um, the material um, constitution is very present and it's actually um, what makes it very physical. So materials such as um, um, wood, um, metal, pigment and, and fabric refer to their own properties uh, by becoming abstract forms. And while they also remain uh, undefined. So the, the materials evoke immaterial moments, I would say, such as thoughts, feelings. Um, energies or uh, even relationships in between the works, um, as well as interpersonal. So if we um, get to see the detailed images in a bit, you will notice that um, physical actions are also manifested in these sculptures, such as um, such as rit ritualistic gestures like folding, winding, uh, sprinkling, uh, and so on. So these dialogues that happen in the space already inspired me in a way to develop and highlight this idea of the dialogical in the format of an exhibition. Um, small field is therefore more like an open field uh, for me that is more permeable and something that remains in motion. Um, throughout the whole duration, small field is accompanied by contributions in the form of posters. So the idea here is to initiate an additional field of dialogue, especially because the format of the poster itself um, is a communication tool and is something that circulates and, um, and also remains in motion. Uh, the poster series um, affiche, that's uh, the overall title for the series, um, features um, contributions by the artist uh, Kirsten Pierrot, by Manuela Leinhus, Hella Gallach, Nora Schulz, and by the uh, curator uh, Mihaila Kiriac, as well as the artist Sofia Duhovny. And this is Vera Palmer, and this is Sofia Duhovny. And, um, and one I made myself, which is actually replacing the floor plan.
So they are all printed on a fiche paper in the size of A1. And, um, and they also address the sculptor's tentativeness and also um, uh, make it expand um, or make the physical uh, exhibition space in expand uh, into the public, public space. I can also go back once uh, we are maybe uh, finished with the introduction. So as soon as we have the uh, permission to open Alana's exhibition for the public again, which will be soon, I hope, um, there will be a program announced within the frame of um, affiche uh, such as walks and guided tours outside uh, the exhibition space, for instance. And um, Alana and I are currently also working um, on a publication that will be released this summer, which uh, will be published by Birke Verlag here in Berlin. And it's uh, meant to bring together all these elements that are part of small field. And uh, I think it's going to be more experimental and goes beyond the a mere documentation of the show. So it also focuses uh, the the processual by showing research material and sketches, uh, for instance. So I really hope uh, that some of you get the chance to see um, the exhibition uh, on site in Bremen as Alana's work really has to be experienced in the physical space and uh, can hardly be transferred within the dig digital. Um, well, Alana, maybe uh, you can now start telling us a bit more about your work uh, you're showing yeah. in Bremen. And um, maybe uh, let's start with this piece. Um, the title uh, is uh, very particular. Maybe uh, we can, um, yeah, speak a yeah. bit about how, yeah. how that came about. Of course, um, can can everybody hear me? Okay, because I, I can't see myself anymore. Yep, we hear you. Okay, <laughs> hi. Um, thank you, Melissa. Thank you so much for being um, so flexible during this whole process and um, as it became apparent that I probably wouldn't be able to travel to Bremen and um, we, we started doing sort of um, FaceTime or Skype walkthroughs through the gallery um, and the first thing that struck me was was the length and also these concrete architraves so my initial um, sort of inclination was to keep everything quite low down and um, that, like Melissa said, would, would maybe invite um, um, a kind of uh, longer study or a sort of like a, a sort of tentative invitation to go down and, and, and look. Um, and the whole, the experience of choosing the works was very, um, it was quite seamless. I, I, I don't remember it, it. We we bounced back some ideas from each other and um, um, and the selection happened very naturally. Um, and this piece, um, which is called No Noise, No Glass, No Upholstery, boxed her up from the extraordinary. It's quite a mouthful. Um, this piece became um, quite central to us both without us actually having said it was, but it, it seemed to become that way. Um, and it's a work, it's actually a remake of a work that I made in 2012 for an exhibition in the Douglas Hyde Gallery in Dublin. And um, I was at the time very absorbed in the novels of Elizabeth Bowen. And this is, the title is um, an excerpt from her novel, To the North. 
Um, <clears throat> maybe a, a general word about Bowen um, was that I found the process of reading her novels a very hospitable space for thinking about making my own work. Um, there was something about this novel to the north in particular about it having something like extra time. It was in, in one of the characters says um, a day slipped between Monday and Tuesday. And that is the sort of atmosphere of the book and her writing is that there is space and everything is slowed down. And at the same time, the, the backdrop of the novel is it's set in the interwar period. So there's a kind of a, a pending atmosphere throughout. There's always a meanwhile. Um, but it's, it's sort of space for allowing you to, um, to notice everything is, is very present. Um, so, um, yeah, this, this, this is the title um, was taken from, from this. And um, Bowen said of, that her aim, that the object of the novel is the non-poetic statement of a poetic truth. And um, that, that I like that very much. Um, and she talked a lot about her writing being, seeing it as verbal painting and trying to make her work do the job of line and color. Um, yeah, I think talking about, um, talk, I think talking about one's influences is sort of like my way of by proxy talking about the work. So I think, you know, um, and often I think that's the way with artists, um, that by proxy, you, 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 when, you under, when, you, when you understand or get to know people's likes and their interests, that by, by, by proxy that talks about the work. Um, and I was thinking a lot during this exhibition about how subjectivity is or could be an interpersonal thing. And this then relates a lot back to what Melissa was saying about the affiche series and um, how something like a specific encounter can be an impetus for, for, an, for an artwork. And this, this might have nothing to do, this is completely transformed, it might have nothing to do with the, the finished work, but that somehow something of the initial feeling is left intact in the work and that somebody can pick up on that either unconsciously or consciously and um, and I was thinking a lot about that during making this show and choosing the older works and um, especially having not been able to go and see the space myself and experience it and um, and then also with the title that it was something that was um, very open and um, uh, has multiple meanings, but also I was, you know, uh, it, it related to what we've been going through the last um, year and a bit. Um, so maybe I can talk a little bit about um, slow music, the the more installation piece. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the uh, one of the new works that came from Dublin to the show. Um, and um, it was sort of developing over the last year and I wanted to keep it quite loose in its, um, in the way it's put in the, the way it's hung or put in the room. Um, and I borrowed the title from, um, it's a title of an album by Morgan Fisher and Lyle Coxhill that I've been listening to for maybe like five or six years a lot in the studio because it's really good. Um, it's almost not music, like it kind of comes in and out. And actually um, recently I, I, I bought um, 
uh, an original LP. It's, it was made in 1980. And on the back of it, Morgan Fisher says, in retrospect, it could perhaps be said that the intention was to produce the minimum amount of music. If such an amount can ever be the same for two different people, or even for the same person at different times. Required to hold the listener's attention without dictating what his or her response should be. Um, and also there's a beautiful screen print of this sort of meshed layers of meshed fabric on the album cover, which, uh, yeah, I, did, I didn't know that was going to be there. So that was nice. Um, yeah, so um, the next work that I could maybe uh, just give a little bit of background on is Sifting Screen from 2019. Um, yeah, this work, um, um, it's made from, there's a, there's a blouse underneath that's, well, it's from the 1940s, the blouse. Um, and the, the material on top is like a sort of acrylic mesh that I've painted into. And then it's papier mache on either side. Um, and um, the title, Sifting Screen, is from taken from um, um, a piece of text of Michel Leary um, on Geocometti, on visiting his studio. Um, and I'll just read you out the short quote. Some of these sculptures are hollow like spatulas or emptied out fruits. Others are perforated with air passing through them. Poignant lattices placed between interior and exterior worlds. Sifting screens eroded by the wind. A hidden wind that envelops us with its vast black swirls at those unheard of moments of delirium. Um, yeah, I think, I think maybe we could open it up now or if... Sorry, do you mean open up to Q and A? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Alana. Um, so if thank you. I, I meant to say thank you, Candice, as well, very much for hosting this. Pleasure. The, the embassy are really, really happy to have you here tonight presenting your work and happy to be supporting the exhibition as well. Um, hopefully we can make it down to Bremen and see it in real life because it, it looks like it's just a wonderful atmospheric sort of experience to be in. <laughs> so, yeah. It's yeah. very, it's strange for me. Um, I mean, I'm really glad that in, the installation photographs are really, really great. Um, uh, but it's it is strange not uh, having been there myself and talking about. <laughs> well, if anybody um, has a question to pose, you can put up your uh, digital hand or, I mean, turn on your camera, I can see the cameras uh, or whoever has their camera on. So you can raise your hand physically with the camera or put it up digitally if you don't want to turn your camera on uh, or you can pose a question in the chat box. Um, there's none in the chat. In the meantime, actually, Alana, I mean, you know, you've, you've touched on that, but I'd like to ask that question to dive deeper into that. Where do you think, you know, this experience of, of putting on an exhibition during a pandemic um, and doing it remotely and sort of like experiencing that by proxy, you know, of installing it. I, I mean, does, I'm not sure, does this happen sometimes anyway, if like for financial reasons or whatever, if there's an exhibition on the other side of the world, you know, would you do this anyway? Or do you think this is kind of going to open up uh, more opportunities in this way that we've kind of for, been forced to, um, you know, deal with the challenges here? Um, maybe. Um, I, I have never, I have never um, installed a show like this um, remotely. I mean, I, I have, 
I have done certain things remotely, uh, but maybe more um, if it was one or two pieces in a group show that I wouldn't necessarily need to 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 go and install it myself. Um, but this was it, it made me think a lot more about um, like touch in the work and because a lot of it is so um, you know, I, I, I wrote as detailed instructions, but but it a lot of it is quite um, um, personal, I suppose, in how in how you place things, you know. Um, so, um, I mean, we we had a good idea of where things would be placed in the room, but things like folding the fabric. Um, or um, like Melissa said, there's a sort of sprinkling of dust. I I sort of did that in my studio and sent her a photo of to approximate, you know, and she she's done a great job in um, um, in doing it, you know. Melissa, how do you uh, feel about this experience, you know, um, having gone through that kind of like being given such um, detailed instructions? I mean, I, I, I presume, you know, as, as curator as well, you're, you'd intuitively kind of um, be, uh, you know, assessing the space and the experience as well, um, normally during the process. But was this, I mean, this was obviously a very different experience. So how, how, did, how did you find that? Um, uh, I think, uh, and I also talked about it to Elena, I think um, as it's with the exhibition, I think the whole process of uh, developing these ideas for an exhibition, this kind of dialogue and eventually meeting in the space and installing the work together is something that's very important to me. And also um, uh, this moment when things come together in the space and where there is, there, there is just so much happening uh, during these these install days and I was a bit nervous about not having this kind of exchange uh, when installing the work and um, I just wanted to make sure that uh, um, everything is, um, uh, I mean, that Alana is happy with the, with, the, with the results. So that's why we actually, we had this, uh, uh, dialogue via Skype and I really wanted to make sure that she's pleased with how everything uh, is set up um, but in the end that's what Alana said she said I mean you're you're there I mean you're in the space and even though we have this these instructions and um, we we talked about it uh, so many times but in the end, um, it's really about the feeling as well and how things kind of come together uh, uh, more naturally. Uh, and, and this is something I think not everyone is very um, familiar with. So um, I was lucky that Alana actually trusted me and she was very much, she was very um, generous and said, uh, uh, you just, try out and you see how it looks and then we still can speak about it and um and and it was fine i mean i was i i realized it's also a way uh to 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 work on things together so um yeah it was a it was a new experience for me and the uh um yeah i think it 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 all worked out and I was just happy that everyone was very pleased with how things turned out and um, yeah. But nevertheless, I mean, it's really, I really hope that Alana at some point can see the, the exhibition in person. Um, we already decided this, the, the, the show will be extended and will be on view over the summer. So um, I will still try. <laughs> 
try to 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 meet her in this space so we still get the um yeah chance to uh speak about a few things um yeah on site i would say i mean uh, because in the end for me uh obviously we have this documentation and um, and i can still show the exhibition to other people but the whole process i think um of getting there is for me it's the that's the actual uh um, work or the the main um interest i would say thank you pork that looks fantastic Aline, Alana, sorry, excuse me. Alana, can you elaborate upon the use of found objects, clothing, etc., in your work? Thanks, Pork. Hi, Pork. I can't see you. Um, um, yeah, there's oh maybe we can show Melissa the 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 image of um, life group A. Yeah, perfect. Um yeah, so I'm just taking this as an example of a found object. Um, it's a, I'm not sure about the term found object. I guess it's the, it's the best. I, I haven't come up with um, another one, but they're not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not looking for them. So maybe they're, yeah, I haven't, I don't know about found object. Um, this is a box of pigment. Um, it's, I, I, I found it in uh, um, my, my dad's house and uh, it's quite old, I think, uh, but the pigment is still inside it, but it's, um, it's from Sweden and it's this sort of um, iron oxide pigment that they paint on the wooden houses. Um, and um, it's actually a pigment that I used. I've done an addition for Bremen and um, it's, I've used an iron oxide pigment for, for this piece as well. Um, and it's a color that's around, it's, I can actually see it from this window. It's on a Victorian gasometer in, in Dublin and it's a color that I very much associate with um, Victorian architecture but then also this these these wooden houses um, and the um, I feel like using these things it's I almost I, I almost forget about their um, particularities in the sense of what what the symbol is it, and it becomes more about it being part of a work so it's assimilated into the work um yeah thanks that's uh really, uh, I, I, do you do you want to ask anything else or well no i just was uh, thinking about the, the ob sorry not found objects ready made was what i was thinking well, I, yeah i don't know like i i maybe found objects is the best i was just you know, a historical term but i suppose uh, what i was getting at is it seems that quite often when you use these objects they have quite autobiographical resonances mm. because the work often is deeply personal mm. so, but then i feel like i even sort of feel a sense of regret and saying the autobiographical because then I feel like maybe that closes things, you know? Um, which is interesting in itself, you know, in a, in a broader way. Um, Thank you. Good to see you. You too, well done. Thanks, Pork. Um, does anyone else have any questions they want to um, put in the chat or you can also just uh, vocalize them if you like. Um, on that, Alana, so you, you just said that it's like, it seems to me like you're, you're sort of taking or attempting to take your, your personal or like autobiographical out of it somewhat. Yeah, maybe because I, I I'm not sure how expansive that is. 
Um, I just, I, well, I wonder if it would be possible at all to, to, to not have yourself, you know, like it's all coming from, it's an expression from uh, within, I mean, that sounds. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I suppose it's more about, um, about um, saying sort of details, does that then stop it for, for a viewer? Because the artwork is, is um, hopefully without knowing anything about it is, or anything about me is, is an open thing. I suppose that's my hope. Okay, thank you. Um, just, I wanted to ask as well, is it possible, maybe Melissa, you can answer this, is it possible to view these photos in our own time somewhere? Like in uh, like more um, time to look at them? Um, yes, of course. I mean, they, the, the whole documentation will be up on the website. Uh, to, yeah, we have like a really like fine selection of um, images that make sense to kind of, uh, um, uh, yeah, to experience the exhibition digitally maybe. And um, yeah, but they will be, they will be up on the website and shared um, through social media and uh, yeah, we might have a um, have a um, ex an, an, a video and exhibition walkthrough uh, in case we don't we yeah we can't open a new time. But um, as I said, I'm very optimistic, and I hope people actually get the chance to um, come to Bremen and see the works themselves. Um, when, until how long has it been extended for? Um, still not um, final. It's just um, well for now until end of June, but it will be it will definitely be on for um, uh, for longer. But we will communicate these. I mean, it's right now dates really don't make any sense. So I just try to um, uh, be a bit more. Uh, patient with yeah communicating these things and um, as soon as we know uh, um, yeah the date for the opening uh, for the reopening I think I can I can um, negotiate the duration of the show okay fabulous um, so if there's no more questions it's actually um, a good time now to attempt our um, breakout sessions. Um, for those at home who will be watching this in the future, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to stop the recording now in a, a minute. Uh, we'll have more culture salons coming up, um, all sorts of uh, aspects of Irish culture will be covered. Um, the next one we have will be in July with uh, a, a selection of Berlin-based uh, Irish visual artists. And the next event that the embassy, or sorry, the next uh, cultural event that the embassy will be uh, hosting will be next Thursday evening. It is the um, launch of the, uh, the Creative Pathways University Collaboration uh, Programme. That's next Thursday at seven o'clock CET as well.